Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from Grindhouse Funhouse. And it is that sweet time of year once again when the Fantasia Film Festival, one of the big, if not biggest, genre cinema festival in the world happening from July 14th to August 3rd here in beautiful Montréal, Quebec, comes back to the light of all with a lineup of about 130 features and 200 plus shorts of horror, sci-fi, comedies, action, weird Japanese movies, retro movies, all for their 26th edition in person meaning every screening will be at all the regular movie theaters we're accustomed to with a full audience, which is the way it's supposed to be. For this top 10 picks video, which are all my personal picks, which I'm basing solely on the trailers I've watched and the synapses I've read that sold me on putting those movies on my schedule, I'll split this into two categories. All the 2022 movies they'll be showing that I'm very curious to see and the retro movies, which is always a big part of my Fantasia experience each year, wondering which old movies they're gonna dig up and be part of that year's lineup. I'll also talk about all the special events happening, like say the Career Achievement Award given to some guy named John Woo. I think you might have heard of this fella. So uh, stay until the end of the video where I'll give you all the deets on where and where to get your tickets and all other useful information you may need. But uh, first up, here's my top 10 picks in no particular order. Let's do this. Released in his home country back in February, Dark Glasses is a modern-day giallo about an Italian escort who's uh, attacked and blinded by a serial killer in an attempted murder. While escaping the attack by a car, she meets a young Chinese boy who assists her in her lack of sight, and have only each other to depend on as they flee through the night, trying to stay one step ahead of the serial killer and facing other obstacles along the way. Longtime makeup effect collaborator Sergio Stivaletti is back to provide all the dark red blood and gore to satiate your lust. Dario's daughter Asia has a role in the movie and is one of the producers, and obviously the poster is a nod to 1988's John Carpenter classic They Live. Let's be real, the last two decades in Argento's filmography hasn't been the greatest, so could this be the movie that rides the ship back on track? We shall see. The screening will be held at Theatre Hall Saturday, July 30th at 9.45pm. What would be Fantasia without a zombie movie on your schedule? This year, the honor goes to the French meta comedy Coupé, which is a remake of 2017's One Cut of the Dead, which was shown at Fantasia in 2018. What is Coupé about? Well, I'll tell you. It's about a tiny film crew shooting in an abandoned warehouse when, uh-oh, zombies appear. They run from the few extremely slow zombie invaders and never stops filming, which results in the first ever one-take zombie movie. The main selling point for me here is director Michel Azanavicius, who's behind my favorite Euro spy comedies, OSS Sunset, Le Caire Ni d'Espion, and uh, OSS Sunset, Rio Ne Répond Plus, with Jean Dujardin playing the spy. And of course, they went on to win all those Oscars back in 2012 for The Artist. So yeah, I'm in it for that. The screening will be held at Theatre Hall Friday, July 15th at 7 p.m. Sissy is a mean girl horror story from Australian co-writer directors Barlow, Anna and Senes Kane in their directorial debut. It's about Cecilia, a successful social media influencer living the dream until she runs into her ex-childhood best friend who's invited away at a bachelorette weekend. Suddenly Sissy finds herself stuck in a remote cabin with her school bully and a taste for revenge. One reviewer described it as a psychological thriller meets social media slasher. I mean, yeah, I want to see that, and I get the feeling Aisha D, who plays uh, Cecilia, gives a killer performance, pun intended. The screening will be held at Theatre Hall, Tuesday, July 19, at 6.35 p.m. Someone else who will possibly give us a killer performance is Jang Yuk in The Killer, a South Korean actioner directed by Choi Jae Un. It's about a retired assassin whose wife goes on a trip with her friend and asks him to look after the friend's teenage daughter. On the first night, the young woman goes out with friends and becomes the target of a human trafficking ring that gets rich from child prostitution. What that criminal organization doesn't know is that they mess with the wrong assassin who will use his particular set of skills and revert back to his murderous ways and on his own mission to get back the girl alive in one piece. This generically titled movie is not to be confused with John Woo's The Killer. This is an adaptation of the novel The Child Who Deserves to Die by Bang Jing Ho. You definitely get the Taken and John Wick series vibes coming from this one. South Koreans do make excellent action movies. I've seen plenty of them in Fantasia and I have a feeling this will be one more added to the roster. The screening will be held at Theatre Hall Tuesday, August 2nd at 9.30pm. Lastly, for the 2022 movies on the schedule and closing out the festival, 824 is on a hot streak as of late, Ty West's X, 
and the Daniels Everything Everywhere All at Once, which both came out back in March, and both will surely have spots on my year-end's top 10 list. And now we have Bodies, 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 a black comedy slash mystery slash slasher movie directed by Alina Rain. It's about a group of rich 20-something friends who gather for a party in an isolated family mansion, decides to play Bodies, 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 a game where one of them is secretly a killer while the rest tries to escape. Things take a turn for the worse when real body parts turns up, setting off a paranoid and dangerous chain of events. This is the other social media generation theme movie on this year's schedule, which has been its own genre for a while now, starring everyone's favorite comedian Pete Davidson as one of your main protagonists, Maria Bakalova from Borat's subsequent movie film, Lee Pace, who's been in all your favorite critically praised yet short-lived TV series and a bunch of unknowns to run out the cast. Last time I saw a movie at Fantasia where people were being murdered in a lavish mansion was back in 2019 with Ready or Not. So if Bodies, Bodies, Bodies can reach that level of excellence and smart, subversive and darkly funny horror movie making, then I shall be happy. The screening will be held at Theatre Hall Wednesday, August 3rd at 9.30 p.m. Now on to the retro movies. First up, we have Blue Sunshine, which came out in 1978, directed by Jeff Lieberman, who's been a regular guest slash attendee at Fantasia over the years. So basically, a bad batch of LSD, a bunch of hippies took a decade earlier, now makes them go bald and kill people. Jerry, played by Zalmon King, is wrongfully accused of murdering three women and sets out to clear his name and discover the secret behind Blue Sunshine. Zalmon King went on to become a uh, nanny softcore purveyor with the Wild Orchid movies and the Red Shoe Diaries TV series. Jeff Lieberman, who will be in attendance for this midnight screening, has uh, had a great three movie run from 1976 to 1981 with uh, Squirm, Blue Sunshine, and the slasher classic Just Before Dawn. This will be the North American premiere of a new 4K restoration release by Synapse Films, which has uh, no physical release date on the schedule, so it could be tomorrow or five years from now. It is Synapse Films, so who knows? The screening will be held at Salle Gia de Sèvres, Friday, July 15th at 11.55 p.m. Another midnight screening sponsored by Synapse Films and it's for 1983's The Deadly Spawn. When a meteorite touches down in the New Jersey woods carrying a monstrous alien slug, it's up to a bunch of teens to stop it before its terrifying brood consumes all life on Earth. This is a gory creature feature that was shot on 16mm with a budget of about uh, 25000 in New Jersey by first-timers behind the camera. This will be the world premiere of the 4K restoration Synapse Films done did for it. No physical release date for this one either. Stick around after the screening for the first look presentation of Return to the Spawning Ground, a new 22 minutes featured by Michael Gingold and Glenn Baisley when they go to revisit the filming locations for the movie, i.e. the house they use for the entire shoot. The screening will be held at Salle Gia de Sèvres, Friday, July 29th at 11.55 p.m. Everyone's favorite Blu-ray boutique label Vinegar Syndrome has a midnight screening of their own with 1974's Shriek of the Mutilated. Probably one of the best slash worst Z-grade monster movie ever committed to Celluloid, so I've been told. Four college students and their professor embark on a path of mystery and death while searching for the abominable snowman. This is a Yeti movie, and is this the definitive one? I don't know, I'll discover that pretty soon since I have yet to see it, but I do have a soft spot in my heart for 1977's Yeti Giant of the 20th Century. If you haven't checked that one out, get on it. This is a classic 1970s drive-in movie and or shown in Grand House movie theaters on 42nd Street directed by Michael Finley who met a pretty gruesome end three years later being decapitated by helicopter blade on the rooftop of the Pan Am building in New York City back in 1977. That is harsh. Vinegar Syndrome will debut the title with a brand new 4K restoration from the original uncensored negative, complete with all the missing gore from other releases and the original popcorn song which seems like a thing to be excited about. You can pre-order it right now on Vinegar Syndrome's website, which has a shipping date for July 26th. But three days before that, you can catch a screening of it July 23rd at Salagia de Sèvres at 11.55 p.m. One of the main attractions Fantasia provides to a lot of people is their programming of Asian cinema, movies we would otherwise never get a chance to see in theaters if not for Fantasia. The whole festival existence is pretty much based on their love of Hong Kong cinema and anime from Japan at their start back in 1996. I make it a point to catch a few of those movies each year since it's a genre where I've certainly watched a few but I can certainly watch a lot more of and Fantasia is the best place to bone up on the Kung Fu classics. This year is no different and I wanted to conclude my top 10 picks with a Kung Fu double header from the Shaw Brothers era. First up, 
1979's Kid with a Golden Arm, which is about the good guys escorting a shipment of gold to a famine-stricken region. A simple story with promised kick-ass kung fu fury. What will be shown to us will be a new scan from the original 35mm negative at Salgia de Sèvres, Saturday, July 30th at 2.45pm. And then we have 1982's Mercenaries from Hong Kong, a modern-day set Shaw Brothers movie about a band of mercenaries in Hong Kong hired by a mysterious tycoon's young daughter for a special mission to go into Cambodia and kidnap the assassin who killed her father. If that sounds familiar to some of you, the plot was lifted from 1978's The Wild Geese. Plenty of action set pieces where things blows up real good and people get real dead and apparently some tasteless human is thrown into the mix. It stars some of the most uh, famous Shaw Brothers legends, Tai Lung, A Better Tomorrow, Lo Li, Five Fingers of Death, Wong Wu, Dirty Ho, <laughs> and Wang Long Wei, Hong Kong Godfather, so that's exciting. We'll get to see a beautiful new 2K restoration from the original 35mm negatives at Salgia de Sèvres, Saturday, July 26th at 11.30pm. So now let's talk about the special events happening at this year's edition. First up is an artist talk with Kela Genis, a big figure in the genre community who's been involved with Fantasia as far as I can remember, writer, film festival programmer, and in the early 2010s she ran the Blue Sunshine Micro Cinema here in Montreal, which I uh, sadly never got to experience. She had probably her biggest year last year with her documentary Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitch, a history of folk horror, getting all kinds of a at film festival around the world, including Fantasia. She'll be receiving the Canadian Trailblazer Award and she'll discuss the new 10th anniversary edition of her book House of Psychotic Women, which also will have a uh, separate book launch and screening series hosted by Kayla. The talk will go down at the York Amphitheatre Friday, July 22nd at 5.30 p.m. And the 10th anniversary book launch will go down Sunday, July 24th at 4 p.m. at Salle Gia de Sèvres. Then we have producer Pierre David, a fellow Montrealer and one of the biggest and prolific Canadian producers of genre cinema around. With 218 credits on his filmography as of this video, you can thank him for all the early Cronenberg movies like The Brood, Scanners and Videodrome, Of Unknown Origin, Pin, he even directed the first Scanner Cop movie. The man has done it all. He's also known for having produced most of Jean-Claude Law's early movies like Bingo, Parlez Nous D'Amour and Panic. Mr. Law was another pillar in the Quebecois film industry and in genre cinema, who sadly left this mortal coil back in January, but his work will remain and be discovered for years and years to come. One of Jean-Claude's movies, his first in English was uh, 1982's Visiting Hours, shot right here in Montreal, starring Michael Ironside playing a real evil bastard, uh, Lee Grant, Linda Pearl, and the one and only William Shatner. The screening for Visiting Hours will be held at Cinémathèque Québécoise Tuesday, July 26th at 6.30 p.m. And at the screening of 1974's Bingo, Mr. David will receive the Denis Hiru Award, which is an award recognizing exceptional contribution to the development of genre and independent cinema in Quebec, which is definitely on top of that list. The screening will be held at Cinémathèque Québécoise Thursday July 21st at 6 30 p.m. where Mr. David will receive his award before the screening. And finally the one and only John Wu, master of Hong Kong action cinema, who created a very identifiable style of filmmaking that was copied multiple times over, his influence looms large in the action cinematic world, so of course Fantasia will honor him with the Career Achievement Award in this masterclass that's really a, a Q&A. Uh, they'll discuss his distinct style of filmmaking, his journeys from Hong Kong to Hollywood that uh, brought Asian cinema into the mainstream, with Western audiences and the influences that shape him into the master of cinematic action. The talk will go down at Cinéma du Musée Saturday, July 16th at 3 p.m. In conjunction with the talk, we're getting a double dose of Wu with the masterpiece that is 1992's Hard Boil, starring Chong Young Fat and Tony Long Chai Wei. I mean, this is the movie which the phrases Bullet Ballet and Gun Fu were coined, so that's cinematic history right there. The screening will be held at Theatre Hall Friday, July 15th at 9.30 p.m. Then 1997's Crazy Bananas Face Off, starring Nicolas Cage and John Travolta, hamming it off big time to great effect, all wrapped around John Woo's cinematic world. I'd say the highlight of Woo's career in Hollywood, and I can't believe I saw this movie 25 years ago in theaters, and I get to do so again Sunday, July 17th at 4 p.m. at Salle Gia de Sèvres. So that is it, my top 10 picks for the uh, 26th edition of the Fantasia Film Festival. Hopefully this gave you a few movies to add to your schedule. I've posted the Fantasia website links to all the movies and events I've talked about and a link to a PDF schedule which can be very handy in the description below. You can also get your hands on the printed program. I mean, look at this beautiful beast, how thick and luscious it is. <laughs> I'm glad they're back and I get to add another one to the collection. Tickets are on sale right now at the ticket office of the SGWU Alumni Auditorium, which is one of the Concordia University buildings located on Maisonneuve Boulevard in downtown Montréal. 
You can also get tickets through the Ticket Pro network. The best deal for you is to buy them directly at the Fantasia box office. So uh, if you want to save a few dollars, I'd head over there pronto. So, all right, go visit all my socials at Grindhouse Funhouse. In the comment section below, let me know your Fantasia picks for this year. I'd love to know. Maybe some of your picks will convince me to go check them out. Do enjoy this year's edition with all your fellow movie lovers and cat meowers. If you see me at a screening, do say hi, and I will acknowledge said hi with a hello, and uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you for watching, and I'll say to you, ciao bye for now.